7 p.m. and the date is Tuesday, December 8, 2020. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. The board consists of five members and two alternates. The alternates taking full part in the discussions and becoming a voting member in the absence of a member or when a member abstains for conflict of interest. Uh, present tonight are members, Ms. Lisa Carson, uh, Mr. John Goodikens, is he here? No, okay. Uh, Mr. Joe Cross and Ms. Kay Towsley. And alternates are Mr. Aaron Thomas. And what about Mr. Robert Delac? Is he here? Okay, Mr. Thomas, guess what? You're going to be the alternate uh, member who will be actually voting tonight. Yay! And if they come, then you're still going to be the voting member. Yay! Hey, you're online, so... <laughs> I am John Golzi, the chair. Also present are the zoning administrator, Mr. David Riggs. And secretary, is the, our secretary here? No. Mr. Riggs, is our is Carrie here? I don't see her. I don't believe she is. Okay. I, was, I was gonna contact her. She uh, was out today. So. Okay, okay. However, we do have the government uh, channel team, Mr. Scott Thompson and Mr. Ryan Shortsoff. The board operates according to the following procedure. The chair will name the, and describe the case. The zoning administrator or secretary will state the basis of the objection and any applicable facts or conditions pertaining to the case. The appellant or their representative will give reason why the appeal should be viewed favorably. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in general or opposition will be heard. If necessary, the appellant or the representative will offer concluding summary or rebuttal remarks. Testimony from the floor shall be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. According to Athens City Code Section 230703B, the board has power to grant variances from the strict application of the code, provided the variance will not be contrary to the public interest, the spirit of the code is observed, public safety and welfare are secured, and substantial justice is done. According to Athens City Code Section 230710C, a vari a variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes a specific findings of fact based directly on the particular evidence presented to it that the standards and conditions imposed in this title if applicable, have been met by the applicant. And those are exceptional circumstances, a practical difficulty and undue hardship, uh, preservation of equal property rights, minimum variance, absence of detriment, and not being a general nature. And we discuss those in more details uh, when we get to that point. Um, any person, resident or officer, department or appointed body of the city of Athens aggrieved by a decision of the board may petition the Athens County Court of Common Pleas concerning the illegality of the decision. Uh, such petition must be filed within 30 days after the mailing of the decision of the board to the applicant. There's only one case tonight. And that's the property at 41 Brown Avenue. Uh, I assume the appellant is here, although I don't see on the list yet. Um, anyway, the board is required to take testimony under oath. Um, would anyone wishing to speak concerning any item on the agenda, uh, please unmute your, your microphone and state either yes or no, whether you swear or affirm that any testimony you will present to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
and we assume anyone who will be testifying tonight is under oath. Cam, that's you. Yes or no? Yes. Cam, Mr. Emerson at Property Management, you got to say yes to that. Hello, sir. Or you could say no if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I, I see him. I don't know if he can hear us. Can you hear us? Cam? Am I the only one that sees him? Uh, no, he's... Um... I'm going to send him a message in the chat. Yeah, no, no. John, you do have somebody uh, from the community who has raised their hand. Actually, a couple people. I'm not sure what this in regards to whether it's this case or not. I'll, we'll wait till. Um... Oh, it says they don't have an. Somebody says we do not have a feature to unmute in the chat. In the chat. Is yeah, what? That, that, that's for the attendees. That's correct. Oh, so how, 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 how does Cam? We have unmute. to unmute them, I think. John does or somebody. The, um, Cam is a participant. He's um, He should have access to unmute. I sent Cam a message. <laughs> Cam, can you hear us? Cam, can you hear us? <laughs> we see him. Yeah, we see you. Hey, dude, you. You with the beard. Yep, wait. I think he's 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 getting there. It, it, yeah, that works. Hey, there you go. Can you can he can he hear us? I can now. Good evening. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So, <laughs> yes, no. Yes, yes, okay. sir. Okay, you will be under oath tonight. And um, if others who want to speak uh, and. Uh, I can't see anyone else right now in my screen, but uh, anybody else, I will ask when the time comes. Please remind me of that. There's at least two other people that have commented in the chat. Uh, Joan Krenansky, she's a former board member. Okay, yes. I believe, and Rose, no, not Rose, uh, Kathy, Kathy Corsella. Kathy Corsella? Kathy, Cor Kathy Corsella as well said so says something. So there's two that have said they would like to speak. Specifically. Yeah, and the other okay. person has their hand up. So everybody in attendance would like to speak at this point. Again, we are under the assumption that whoever is testifying, except for the board members and the uh, code officers, uh, you would be under oath. Okay, let's go to our case. Uh, we only have one case, and that is case number um, 20-15V. The property is 41 Brown Avenue, zone is R1. Appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230401 to allow for two units to include an apartment over the garage and increase occupancy to three in each unit on the property that is located in R1 zone and to allow four parking spaces where a total of six parking spaces are required. Um, okay, I just got another call, so I'm going to find where I was six because, and also from ACC 231001 table B, requesting a variance from ACC 230310 to allow two primary structures where one is allowed. And um, with that, anyone who has any questions for the code office, please go ahead until I find where I am. I have some questions for the code office too. So I could go ahead here, uh, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. The current, the current site uh, at 40, uh, 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 41, Brown is uh, two units with maximum of two occupancy each for a total of four, and that would require four parking spaces, which they have. Um, they've requested an additional unit in, over the garage, uh, which would also be uh, a two maximum occupancy. So they would actually need six parking spaces total to meet the code. The other problem that we've run into is that uh, we only have one on the R1, we only allow one 
residential structure on the lot, and this would this would have two residential structures on this lot. Okay, thank you. I did not hear a part of your uh, uh, what you just said, but let me ask you my questions. Uh, they're talking about two units. What are the two units? So yeah, sorry, my my uh, my internet might be a little wonky tonight. Um, they currently have. Uh, one structure on the on the property that has two units for a total of four um, uh, um, people in, in those units with four parking spaces. They're they're proposing to add an additional bedroom over the garage, which is detached from the rest of the structure, and um, that's not permitted by our code. And they would also require two additional parking spaces for that. I don't know if you can hear that okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And then uh, do they have an existing rental permit right now? Is it being rented? Okay. And is there, yes. is there the unit over the yes, garage? That's, that's the one with the two units. Sir. Okay. And is there a unit over the garage is completed? Is it ready to go or is it that they need to construct it? Are you asking me? Um, I don't know. They submitted a per they submitted a permit, and we reviewed the, the permit and uh, refused it. Okay, so there is no structure over the garage. Then there is no unit in there, right? You, you could ask the appellant. He would okay. know. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Riggs? Yeah, just clarification, David. Mr. Riggs, could you? walk us through the parking requirement and how that how that works it's is it two spaces for the first bedroom and one for each additional or what what is the uh, equation for that yeah for uh, this is table b off street parking requirements as part of our codified ordinances two for each dwelling unit plus one for each additional renter so the minimum you could have is two but you have to have one space for each renter that's for owner occupied single family um for uh rental for rental units um it's the same so you'd have to have one for each occupant permitted occupant with a minimum of two so if you had four occupants, you'd have to have four parking spaces. Um, if you had six occupants, you'd have to have six parking spaces. And then so cl for clarification, is the addition in the garage one bedroom? Is that right? So one bed? Two. There will be two occupants in that, uh, in that additional okay. um, room that they have. They're requesting two occupants there, so for they'd have a total of six, and they would require six parking spaces in that case. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, uh, Mr. It, it, I, I'm sorry, John, but just for my confusion, Cam, did you say that the structure was or was not already there on top of the garage. He hasn't talked yet. He, we haven't asked him to come oh. forward yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now, Mr. Cameron, uh, Cameron Tope, is that, do I pronounce it correctly? Yes, sir. Are you yes, in sir, Las sir. Vegas or are you in somewhere nearby? No, I'm in, I'm in Athens right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. But the company Emerson Property Management is based in Las Vegas, right? No, we just do, do that for the filing for the registered agent. It's a liability thing. Oh, okay. that we just we put that in in Vegas. Okay, police uh, officially state your name and your address for the records, and then state your case. And then Joe had a question that I also had the same question, so we can maybe discuss that too. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Cameron Tope. Um, and the the best address would be seventy four forty four Lee Master Road in Athens, Ohio four five seven zero one. Uh, what else did I need to state? Was that? Yeah, just your case. Oh, uh, and then I'm requesting an extra occupancy for a garage. Uh, it is currently just a garage. Um, there is no, we have not begun any work or done any sort of work on that. We made the request to Mr. Riggs. 
Okay, uh, great. Because I thought I saw somewhere that it says it's completed, but um, that was incorrect. Yes, sir. It's just storage right now. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask the board members to ask you their questions, if they have any questions, and then I have a couple. Board members? Um, I just have a question, really, which is based on Joan Kronansky's chat question. Can we look at that? Could you please read that so, because yes. I can't according, see it. According to the Athens Rental Units listing, 41 Brown has a permit for one unit, not two, and approved for two occupants, and she's questioning that. John, when you're ready to take uh, testimony or, or questions or comments from the attendees, just let me know. Okay. Well, but I would ask that myself because she's piqued my interest in that. That is my understanding. Your understanding is that you have four occupants where you're only allowed to have two currently? No, sir, that we have one permit for two occupants. So then yeah. I'm, so, so I'm confused. I thought Mr. Riggs said that the main structure, there were two units. In the main no, uh, no, sir. It's, it's one uh, single family, two bed. Um, we have an occupancy for two. And then we have a garage apart, well, a garage that we would like to convert over for an additional occupancy. It's only one unit. It's not a duplex. Yeah, he's correct. I, I was incorrect in that. It's it's there are four parking spaces, but there's only one unit there. So that that was my mistake. Maximum occupancy for this current rental permit is two. So 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 from what I'm seeing, sir, so that I understand, yes, you sir. want to increase the occupancy of each unit to three. And, uh, and, and the second, in, add a second one, which would be above the structure. So each unit would be three occupants now. Is, is that no, correct? No, sir. The main unit, we could just leave that alone and then either add one or two occupants, depending upon what, what the board sees fit uh, to, for the garage, garage, for the garage structure. Nothing with the existing unit, just a garage structure. It's a 25 by 25 building. It could support two, but I want that's why we just came in to ask for those two additional permits or two additional occupants for that one one structure. That's not what the uh, very that's not what the application says or the variance. Right, right, right. Described. It says three per unit. To summarize again, one unit is the main structure which already exists, and the unit number yes, two sir. would be the unit over the garage. Correct, which is just currently garage. There's no, it's a 25, about yeah. 25 by 25 structure, sir, that's just used for storage. Okay, right. so there is not like a two unit plus the house. That's not the case. Correct. Okay, yes, and then you want to have three in the unit over the garage and then three within the main structure. That's the um, way I understand it. I mean, I, I, I don't think w it would be feasible to do three in the main structure. I would just like to keep that as two. That would be okay. fine. And then do one or two in the garage that's currently just stored. So basically, you're going to have a total of four people in the, ho in the entire property. Yeah, one, two in one and two in the other. Yes, sir. And then you already have four parking lots? There's four parking spaces currently. So um, then why you are here then? Um, <laughs> they told me I had to come here. Mr. Johnny, Johnny he's, here, he's here because it's two structures on one place. But okay. what, what we are confused about is we are looking and it, it seems as if this is asking for a variance as far as the parking issue, which that clearly doesn't seem to be what he's asking for now. So yeah, we parking have four, is not the issue, yeah. Yeah, we have four off or four on, uh, off street and then there's parking along Brown up to the stop sign along the uh, road as well. It also says increase the occupancy to three in each unit. It does. He's only looking at two and one. In, in, um, uh, it, 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 I, 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 I must have missed. 
miss uh, wrote that or mistyped because it's just three or four dependent two in the main structure, nothing, no additional, and then one or two in the garage unit. Because the verbiage has IMC two three in each unit on property is what yeah, I'm reading. I think that three should be changed to two, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're going to change that to two. And if that's the case, uh, Mr. Riggs, I think we should uh, disregard the parking issue. That is correct. If they were only going to have two in each one of the units, they would only need okay. four parking spaces. Right. So that makes it a little bit better. Mm, it does. Okay. So, so can I ask? So the only variance being asked for is to have two structures on the property. Yeah, it seems like it. And the structure is actually going to be on the top of the garage. So I don't know if you can still call it a separate structure or not. It is separate uh, by about a foot, foot and a half. We already have electrical out there, but it is separate by, like I said, about but a foot. But you foot. already have the garage separate, right? So you're going to yes, put sir. another unit on top of it. Uh, no, we would actually take the garage as a two-story garage. Okay. And that's what we would convert. So we wouldn't add another structure at all to it. It would just be converting the contents of the inside to. Okay. So basically the garage is going to change. Okay. Yes, sir. Just inside. So now, the garage would become a second primary structure. Yeah. So basically already is that already has two structures. One is accessory because garage is called accessory, but now it's going to be two the structures, units um, for occupancy then, because they, um, otherwise the garage wasn't livable before. So that's the accessory Correct. building. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tope, I have a question. Uh, right now, the property is being utilized, right? I mean, you have a renter? Yes, sir. Uh, why yep, do you want to add people? Why do you want to add people? What is the what? reason for that? Yeah, so we, um, I just got the property a few months ago in this summer, and uh, we started doing a lot of work on the outside, just taking out vines and weeds. I don't know if, if you guys have been by there recently, but it looks a lot better. And now we have this big garage that's just dead space. Um, so we figured we could add more, uh, another, another unit there. Um, it would be a, a highest and best use, and we could clean up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. Well, because our philosophy is that we all want to respect the law and the code. Yes, sir. And the thing is that if the property is being already utilized, um, then, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't be just going adding because that would be the wish of any citizen in this town to keep adding. Uh, I assume it's the profit or, you know, it's a monetary cases, which we do not consider on the case. So uh, if it is being uh, utilized, again, my question is that um, we probably will be granting more privilege to your property than the neighbors because you just want to keep adding. Well, it's it's already a, a structure. It's yeah. just you converting the the inside of the structure. I know, structure. I know. I mean, it is already. We grant variances for the cases that there is a hardship. There is. I mean, if we don't give the variance, maybe then your property will not be usable anymore. Or if there is a special circumstances, so you need to prove that the special circumstances that exist that it okay. makes it impossible to use your property. Yes, sir. And that's what we need to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can't say there's a hardship on it. It's just, you know, it would just be, you know, adding more uh, another unit or another bedroom or two um, and then get rid of that eyesore. That's just the, uh, the garage, convert that to highest and best use. Okay, any other questions from the board members? Okay, uh, we will give you a chance again to come back, you know, later on after we hear from everybody. So you have a chance to rebuttal. Um, is there anyone online that would like to speak in support of this variance? And again, uh, if somebody can see a hand going up, please let me know and or ask the people. Okay, Lisa, go ahead. John, I just think you should clarify um, once more, maybe, that the parking is no longer an issue. 
and that the only issue is that the garage would be converted into additional uh, secondary or non non accessory, and that more um, renters would be added, but n but no no more parking spaces. Right. We should put that in the motion that this is for a four occupancy, two per unit, and then that will take care of the parking. And so that's uh, whoever is going to make the motion um, should omit that part for the parking and mention that there was going to be four occupancy. So in the next few minutes, maybe you can draft one, Lisa. Okay. Um, all right. Is there anyone who has a general comment on this case or is in opposition? John, I'm just going to let uh, one at a time as I see people raise their hand in the Perfect. attendees list. So they'll be coming in momentarily. Okay, great. Again, sorry I'm late. I have some issues with our Wi Fi. It's okay. Uh, we already assigned uh, Aaron to be a voting member. He's heard the whole case so far, but welcome. And please participate in the discussions. John, we have Joan Kranansky in the meeting right now. Okay. Hi, Joan. Hi, John. How are you doing? And everybody. <laughs> well, um, this kind of sparked my interest because I do drive down Brown Street often. Um, and it's a pretty packed street. Um, I, I check through the code listings and um, for the most part, with two exceptions, and I believe they're grandfathered, it's all single, single family use or single occupancy, no more than three. Um, and since the, th this whole ordinance has been rewritten um, as we speak, um, what I would like to say is that I, I think it's very inappropriate, as you stated, John, uh, in an R1 to have an accessory building occupied, um, uh, single unit only, um, and I know people worked really hard to get some of the R1 zones zoned R1 so that we would have specific places in the city for single family use. Uh, there are plenty of properties out there and available in R2 and R3s for just what this um, appellant, Mr. Trope, is requesting, but not in R1. And, and, and I fear if you would approve this, the ramifications throughout the R1 zones citywide uh, would be very damaging. Um, and I guess last but not least, and I think you stated this, John, that at present there is absolutely no hardship this place is available for renting, has a permit, has off-street parking. And so uh, I would recommend that the board, uh, board does not approve this ordinance as it has been rewritten. Uh, and I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. John, you're muted. Thank you, Joe. Um, yes, Joan, uh, would you, for the record, state your address? We know your name. Joan, Joan can you? 56 Mound Street, Athens, Ohio. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Scott, who do we have next? I have somebody coming in here momentarily. And just for the record that we have a member, John, Mr. John Goodekins is also present. And from my view, he looks just like exactly like David Riggs, so. <laughs> Hi, this is Kathy Coachella. I had a little blip, but it looks like you have me up. Uh, I'm the property owner at 36 Brown. 
Um, I uh, originally logged in because I was opposed to any variance related to the parking. Um, we are all talking as though that has been resolved, but I did hear the property owner confuse me a little bit because he did talk about uh, on-street parking being available. So I would first like to uh, ask you to clarify that there are four off-the-street parking spaces with this property. The second um, question that I have, having listened to the presentation, um, is that it, it's not clear to me that the garage unit would, in, would be a full unit with plumbing and a kitchen or whether it would just be two, one or two bedrooms. Uh, in the event that it uh, would just be bedrooms, I have a lot of concerns uh, about that type of a situation. Uh, so uh, those are my comments and thoughts on that. And you live at what, at 30? I'm the property owner of 36 Brown. But do you live there also? My son does. Okay, we need an address for you then. Oh, 361 North Ardmore, A-R-D-M-O-R-E Road, Columbus, 43209. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it would have it would have to have a kitchen and a bathroom, right? Correct. David? Yeah, it would have to. Yeah, thank oh. you, Miss Kathy. Oh, I was. Uh, you Mr. want me to answer Tom, those questions, Mr. Yes, John? answer answer her question. So this is kind of an unusual process, but it's okay. Go ahead and answer her question. Thank you. Uh, yes, Miss Kathy. So there are f four spaces. Uh, available off street okay. um, currently, and we would not change any of that. And we would put plumbing and everything into the unit, which we would have to do. So it would be a one or two bedrooms plus kitchen and uh, and toilets. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Do we have any other uh, in opposition? We have one more person coming in. Okay. Uh, Rose, you need to unmute. We can't hear you, Rose. How's that? There we go. Can you hear there me now? Go. Okay. Um, we lived uh, at 37 Brown. We purchased the house in 1979 and have seen it go from all owner occupied to all rentals so we've been around the neighborhood for a long time and i'm very pleased to hear that they're they're going to have outside parking that was what brought me here was but the other thing i'm concerned with is that since we have an r1 neighborhood or district now that it was my understanding that r1 would apply to the entire property and there would be on, on that property, regardless of whether there's an accessory structure, it would only be three people. And you know, I'm hearing four people now, and that concerns me. Okay. Um, Does anyone want to talk about it? I mean, I... Well, I, I will ask the appellant, uh, Mr. Tobe, would you like to address that? Um, yeah, Ms. Rose, you've been there a long time, so you've probably seen, you know, 17 walkers, just the adjoining lot, um, purchased that probably four or five years ago and tried to clean it up and, and, and bring the neighborhood up and make it look, you know, Brown has some, some dilapidated houses. And uh, as far as additional occupants, um, since we have the off-street parking and we're, we're not slumlords, we're not trying to put, um, you know, basement units in or anything like that, uh, these would be nice nights units. You can, you know, speak with a lot of our tenants that we have now or, or the code officers who, who go out and do a lot of the inspections that this would be a, a nice place to live for, uh, for students at an affordable price. Okay, now I guess the question I would ask is this would be a variance from an R1. I mean, we'd be, what you would be saying is that it's possible to get a variance from the R1 designation in the zoning to if someone just asked for it, 
you know, like, could we, could we, when we die, I know our children will probably decide what to do at the house. And one thing they could do is say, well, previously people have gotten more than three people in a house. So can we put in four? I mean, Ma'am, they have to come back the same way as Mr. Telpe is doing. They have to come to the board or to the code office. And if there is something which is not uh, um, allowed in R1, then they have a chance to come to the board of zoning and go through okay. the same process. And it is so, not. Yes. Has this ever happened before? I know in our neighborhood, for example, of changing R1 property to uh, the variance is given allowed to bring four people in have you been here long is it long is this a normal thing that has happened before uh, to get a variant again we go from case to case you know depending if they could have a hardship or any uh, special circumstances that applies yes in r1 or r2 or any zone in fact you know this is, okay. uh, variance is given in any zone uh, depending based on the cases Okay, and so in this particular case, would you say then you would grant it for hardship? Well, there are six criteria uh, that we will go through each one of them, and we have to satisfy those criteria uh, before we make a decision. A hardship oh, okay. is one, uh, a special circumstances is one, and uh, minimum variance is something that we need to consider. and. Um, you know, we have to make sure that there is no uh, destruction to the neighborhood or, you know, just six of them, we're, go we're going to go through every one of them. Okay, okay I understand. Okay. Um, anybody else do we have, Scott, or that was the last uh, person? Are you going to let people speak twice? I have some, somebody still has a hand up. Yeah, we are having fun, so why not? Okay, one second. Unless it's Joan. It's Kathy. It's not Joan. Okay, um, I, I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to point out. I think I think Rose raised um, a, a very good point. Um, you know, we have four bedrooms, and we have four um, off the street parking spaces at the property at 36 Brown. And frankly, if this variance is approved, um, you know, we'll probably have to consider whether we want a similar variance. And if this truly is an R1 neighborhood, um, this will be the domino that then, uh, you know, causes all of the other property owners to consider whether or not, you know, we should seek um, a variance as well. So if it's the flavor of the neighborhood and the R1 um, zoning uh, that's important to the community, then this variance should be denied because the other property owners have the same profit motive as, you know, as this particular appellate does. And no offense, I'm a, I'm a you know, I rent my property as well. Um, but there's no reason why I would stay at three if the guys across the street and down the road move up to four. So just, uh, I think Rose's point is very valid. Okay, thank you. And John, you have unlimited time to say whatever you like. No. I'm just, I was kidding about earlier. Um, okay, we have uh, a letter John, from, I yes, go ahead. I just, I uh, just wanted to clarify, uh, it's, I, um, this is a variance from 230310 which is the number of buildings restricted is really the variance that we're, that we're talking about tonight, the way that's been changed. So it doesn't really have to do with the, with the R1 zone. It's 230310 number of buildings restricted. Okay. And it says there shall be not more than one principal dwelling structure and two accessory structures uh, in any zone. So it's, this is, this is a variance for, for any zone where you're allowing more than one residential dwelling on a lot. Okay, Just thank to you. Clarify that for thank you. As long as you are here now, um, if we did, if we deny the variance tonight, and if he comes up with some kind of idea to be able to put all four people in the main building, 
and keep the garage as a structure, as a uh, accessory uh, building, would he need still to come to the board if he puts all four people in the main building? We would need to reapply for a permit and we would have to check to see that all the restrictions for that R1 zone uh, apply for that. So if he okay. doesn't uh, meet all of those current restrictions in our code, then he would come to this board again. Okay. Um, if, they, if, if whatever he did, because we were hypothetical, whatever he did met the R1 code, they, we would not need to come back to this board. Okay. And Mr. Tobe, that was just an option in case this variance doesn't go through. I, in case, I mean, you're the property owner, so if you need to put maybe all four people in the main building, you... Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Um, Chairman. I'm going to read this letter. This is a 16-page letter, but I'm just going to summarize it. It's by Mr. Thomas Manti. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly or not. His address is 27 Walker Street, and he says he's across from 41 Brown. I didn't know how you could be on Walker Street, uh, but be across from the street of 41 Brown. How How is it? His driveway is on Brown. Okay. Okay. And uh, Mr. Manti says that he's been, uh, he's a homeowner in residence at 27 Walker, uh, cross from 41 Brown. And uh, his concerns uh, are uh, about the, to accommodate more than more tenants than their, um, and automobiles. So he probably was not aware of the number four versus six and also the on-site uh, parking. Um, he was concerned about parking density in the sense of both number of occupants and uh, consequential lifestyle. And given the extended fenced yard at the 41, which will bring up the dogs. Uh, he was concerned about the dog. He's been there for 25 years. And then he provides a background of the previous owners of 41 Brown. Um, at the time, he says... Uh, Mr. Manti says that at present, 41 Brown provides parking for two uh, small cars in the garage and comfortably a space for two vehicles in the driveway. Uh, but then he says the garage has not been used really for parking cars. Is either been uh, given uh, permission for neighbors or people to work in the garage uh, as a work, use it as a workshop or a storage or repairing cars. And then um, again, I'm just glancing through the pages. Um, um, it says driveways are usually filled on brown um, and there are no plausible, reliable extra space along the street at 41 Brown. I was there today and I can see that it was really all cars were parked in there. It's a very narrow street. Um, Mr. Mantley also states that uh, safety issues with his, with his own driveway because of the uh, cars being parked over there. Uh, rental properties are so commonly over-occupied and over-parked at that. Uh, they, uh, obviously, they had a meeting and in the Athens West Side Community Association discussing the density, which is an issue in that neighborhood. And uh, a lot of discussion on dogs. Uh, at the present time, he says there are two dogs at 41 Brown. And he seems to like them actually. So uh, he says in the year 2020, this year, uh, for the first time in years, um, at 41 brown dogs have not been an issue. So that's good. And um, again, um, he, the neighborhood as is, is densely populated. It cannot host more residents in excess of current circumstances for 41 Brown. And then um, um, again, there's more discussion on dogs and the other are not quite directly related to the 
case we are hearing tonight. So, Mr. Tope, you want to address any of these issues? This would be the last one. Uh, yeah, I think he might be talking further down Brown. It's a one-way street, but at that intersection of Walker and Brown, there's a lot. It's it's very it's actually pretty open right there. Once you get down further, the the structures are very very close. Um, and this is we're not talking about adding another structure as as uh, Mr. Manti, I believe you said and mentioned. Uh, this would be. Yeah, there would be no additional parking needed. Um, you know, and as he said, you know, um, I think something he might have mentioned in that in that long letter is, is the condition the property has been in this year. Um, you know, we're trying to clean up and do things for the community. You know, I was, I was born and raised in Athens. So um, I do, I think if you look at any of the, the units that I own, it's, it's, it's trying to, uh, you know, elevate those and still provide affordable housing. Um, and I think all the tenants would, would, uh, would agree with that. Okay. Any other discussion? Lisa, did you, I saw this popped up that you had made a comment, something. Do you have anything to say, Ad? Lisa, anybody no, I else? No, answering. Um, Joan had asked a question in the chat. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing the chat right now. Um, anything else that anyone wants to ask or any questions before we close the floor from the discussions? Um, Mr. John, I think uh, Joan just asked, is the garage able uh, to be used for parking? Has it been checked out? Um, we currently, since I bought it earlier this year, we have just used it for storage. I don't see any issues to use it for parking, but it has not. we have not used it for parking due to the excessive or the enough spaces that we have uh, in the driveways. Do you know what the size of the garage is? It's about 25 by 25. 25 by 25. Well, that is... Uh, uh, that's a good size for a two-car garage. Yes, sir. Or two-car, yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like it might have been a door taken off before, but it was a full two-car garage at one time. Yeah. Is that 18 by 20 that is required for each space, but this is a garage, so, yeah, okay. Um, any other questions, comments? We're going to close the discussions from the floor and go over the findings. Assuming I can find them. Okay, exceptional circumstances. Are there exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question? Lisa has something to say. Did, did you want to have that motion? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Okay, I move to grant a variance to the property at 41 Brown Avenue from Athens City Code. 230310 to allow two primary structures where one is allowed. Very good. Do we have a second? Yes, we have it right here. K. Okay, okay K, yeah. second. Great. Um, now we're going to go to any discussions before we go through the findings? No? Okay. Uh, well, one thing I'm, I want to put in here somewhere, maybe that makes sense to, before you get into the questions and answers here is that uh, something I'd like to point out is that the city's comprehensive plan, which is currently being reviewed for approval by city council, has a recommendation that specifically says to allow or permit accessory dwelling units, quote, garage conversion, accessory dwelling structures in R1 zones. This plan recommends amending Athens city code to permit duplex construction and conversions in R1 zones as a conditional use if the dwelling owner is occupied. So my point is that this idea is a good idea. Uh, Athens has a shortage of affordable housing, and this is something that's been, they, the city is concerned about, and we have a commission that's focused on affordable housing that's concerned about this issue. Um, adding a, accessory dwelling units is a way to help with that to add additional housing at low cost. Um, but the exception to that is that generally, if that is allowed and would be allowed if the zoning were to change or the code were to change, it sounds like it's not the zoning code specifically according to what Mr. Riggs said. But if that were to change according to this recommendation, then the requirement would still be that the primary dwelling is owner occupied and that they're adding an additional dwelling that would allow renters or someone else to live in the property, maybe a relative. 
Um, and so it doesn't quite meet the criteria for this, but I wanted to bring this up as something to make sure you're all aware of is that accessory dwelling units aren't a bad thing, even in R1 zones, they're, they're a good thing when it comes to increasing affordable housing and also increasing financial options for landowners. Uh, but the key is that it's best if that's done when the primary dwelling is occupied by the owner. Okay, Joan, you had a comment. Would you like to open your microphone and, and state it? Or somebody read the... I can read it. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to comment that, that he makes what can be a good point, except that if we were to sort of adopt that, um, it does ra it would raise a lot of issues around parking and things like that. Um, if not in this case, then in others. So it just seems like kind of a can of worms, I guess. Anyway, yes. Joan's comment is that the new comprehensive plan is still in draft status and the item that he brought up could be removed in the finalized plan. And I don't know if we can I specify as a low cost housing. I, mean, I don't know who determines is a low cost housing or not. Um, but so my point to make sure you got that was that technically in the situation, this really doesn't quite apply because the key is even the recommendation from the city and the comprehensive plan recommends or says the conditional use would be if the dwelling is owner occupied, the primary dwelling in other words. Uh, or one of the dwellings, at least, is owner-occupied. So well, it doesn't quite apply here anyway. Even yeah. if you were to say this is something the city wants and we should do this, it's it's not. we didn't meet the criteria here. Okay. I would like to add something, it's, I'm, and I'm sorry it's not relevant to the case, but to the comprehensive plan, I would hope that um, the burden is not going to be on us to help these elements of the plan um, come into being because it seems to me that if there are things that they want done differently, they can change the code uh, rather than expect us to be granting variances right and left. Right. Although I think in this case, if it if it was an owner occupied situation, it might make sense for us to grant a variance based on the fact this is what the city wants to do, even though the the code hasn't changed yet. But it doesn't apply here, as I just said. We had a, I want to add, we had a similar case last year with exactly what you're talking about with, uh, they wanted to add an in-law suite on the east side. So, you know, this is, it may be something to look at for the future, but this, this is maybe the second case with the same issue in the past 12 months of adding on, but the other case had owner occupancy and they wanted to add an in-law suite. And our biggest thing was that we didn't want it to turn to a rental because it wasn't zoned for rental. It was only going to be an in-law suite. So this is maybe yeah. something similar to what we're have in front of us tonight. Yeah. I think it was, was a grandfather too. Uh, yes. It was, it, it yes. had been, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. There are a number of grandfathered secondary associate, associate dwellings that have occupants, at least on the near East side neighborhood. I'm not sure about the far East side neighborhood, but that is something that's commonly grandfathered in already. There's a number of additional uh, dwellings on properties in the R1 zones, but um, I'm not sure if that's common on the west side, though, because the properties tend to be smaller. Okay, thank you. Lisa, I want to go back to your motion again. Um, earlier, we talked about having a limit of four. Would you like to amend the motion by saying no more than four occupancy? so that numbers will not be an issue in the future. Okay. Um, so do I just, let's see. So requesting the variance, as I said um, above, to allow two primary structures where one is allowed and no more than four occupants? Total, total four, yeah. No, no more, more than, than the total, total of four occupants. Okay. Um, is the second still K applies? You want to still second the uh, one? No, I actually don't, because my understanding of looking at the code for an R1 on uh, unoccupied rental says no more than three. Well, but we are making a variance, you know, we are just the variance that is yeah, that but, we can yeah, allow but, for. Yeah, but I thought that Mr. Riggs said really this should only be about uh, the accessory structure becoming a primary. 
I would rather not get into how many places can be rented. Well, since we took the parking out of the equation, that was with the understanding that four parking already exists. So mm -hmm. if they want to have more than four, then they probably have to go back to the code office. And again, we are giving the variance, you know, the, you know that's what the code says, oh, three, oh. and we are giving them a variance. Okay. Yes, okay. I will that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Now we can go to the findings, the exceptional circumstances. Are there any exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intended use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties or classes or uses in the same zone? No. I don't think a case has been made no. for that. Okay. I don't Are there any practical difficulty and undue hardship because of exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions pertaining to a specific piece of property? A literal enforcement of these regulations will result in practical difficulty or undue hardship that is unnecessary to the achievement of the public purposes. So if there's no exceptional circumstances and there is no really hardship, so there is no hardship, right? All agree. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. A literal interpretation of these regulations would deprive the appellant of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same zone and the same vicinity, while the granting of the requested variance will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other properties in the same zone and the same vicinity. Joe? No. Okay. Uh, is this minimum variance? Well, earlier I thought it wasn't uh, minimum because there were actually three different things going on. Um, but I could say maybe that is minimum. I, I, I would agree. It's fairly, it's fairly minimum. Okay. Absence Wait. of, the, yeah. I this, don't understand. Why would this be a minimum variance to allow the accessory structure to be another primary structure? I agree with Lisa because uh, the property can be used um, yeah. currently without reasonably without this variance being passed or allowed. Uh, my reasoning was just because, you know, there were three variances before now is one. So in that respect, but you're yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. With you. And I think it should be said that um, the, the owner properly is interested in maximizing his profit um, on his rental. But I think so many people come before us without really understanding that that's not a criterion for us to right. consider. And it, partly it's be, maybe because when they look at the findings, the findings are a little bit obscure in their language, you know. Um, and I think it would be good if that could be somehow made clear. You know, I think we talked about doing a video or doing something to sort of let people understand what, what kinds of reasons variances are granted. Um, right. Because I think people, they quite reasonably, and they, some, some people, obviously not our present appellant, but some people get pretty frustrated and angry because they don't understand why we wouldn't just be granting a variance so that they can do what they want to do with their property um, and have more, residents or whatever so that they can make more money and it's, it's a reasonable question yeah that's that's a good point lisa and in the city of athens you know there's some other cities that financial difficulty is considered but in city of athens um those six criteria are pretty much explains everything we are not going to give variances if somebody wants to increase the usage of the property um, above and beyond the code allows. Absence of detriment, the, the authorization of such variance will not be of substantial detriment to the adjacent property and will not materially uh, impair the purpose of the zoning code or the public interest. Again, we had a uh, couple of people testify 
tonight and we had this very uh, comprehensive letter uh, um, from a neighbor that uh, this would have created some issues, especially with the uh, density in the neighborhood. And not of a general nature. No? Okay. Are we ready to vote? Uh, let me see, where is my first page? Lisa, since you are on right now, we can see you. Let's go and start with you. I vote no. No. Um, Joe? I vote no. Kay? No. No. And uh, Aaron? No. And I would know as well. I'm sorry you don't have the variance, but we discussed maybe some other options that you may consider uh, for not having two structures. Um, you could keep maybe the garage as an accessory uh, structure, but not for living. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. So finally, we have in here other business uh, disposition of the minutes from November 10, 2020 meeting. That was also a very long 15-page uh, uh, document. I haven't read all of it, um, so I probably can't vote tonight. But if we have three members who have read everything, I know, Lisa, you made some uh, changes and you submitted to uh, Ms. Yake. And so she, we have a new version of that. Uh, do we have enough members who have read the whole uh, minutes? Show okay. of hand. Okay. And Aaron, you were not here last time. Uh, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes of uh, November 10, 2020? So moved. Okay. okay. All in favor, just raise your hands. Well, let me just go by, by person. Uh, uh, Lisa? I vote to approve, and I also... Um, second? Uh, oh, it's a second, sorry. Okay. Um, and I just want to say, I don't blame her for not showing up for this meeting. <laughs> I, I, really, I could not have written those minutes out. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the, the minutes were very good. They were very comprehensive. Uh, uh, do we need a... I mean, it wasn't exactly verbatim uh, uh, transcribed, but I think maybe we should... Uh, suggest something more uh, more kind of a condensed uh, uh, maybe a detailed summary rather than just a uh, comprehensive um, and so forth uh, I'll follow up. okay okay and that would be less work and of course we always have the uh, I don't know from the legal point of view Mr. Riggs uh, the, I mean, I don't want to say something that be, to be too summarized and then uh, we have issues with it. These minutes are legal documents, but we also have the tapes uh, so that they, uh, a verbatim could be always created if needed. I'll, I'll follow up and take care of it. Okay. All right. Um, so for the accepting of the minutes, Lisa, you said yes. Um, Joe? Yeah. And uh, Aaron? Here. I wasn't here. I was listening in. That's right. You I were not here. here. But John, John Goodekans, you were here. Yes, definitely. And yeah. I also think that what Lisa brought up today is, is a great, the greatest idea. You know, have, have these people go to their neighbors. I mean, we should tell them, go to your neighbors, talk to them. If, if we talk to four neighbors and they say, no way, I'm not going to vote for that, then they, they're not wasting our time coming to us and us telling them that they should have gone to their neighbors instead of, you know, instead of saying, I would just want to make a ton of money and, and stuff like that. So I, I think that's well, a great idea. I, I made the suggestions of, this goes back to a few years ago, uh, to create some um, videos. And since Scott is here and Ryan is here to videos, uh, that could be done professionally either by maybe some of us or maybe by others uh, to uh, to discuss those things and have them played on the government channel. Uh, would you like to yeah. be the person to do it? <laughs> I vote for Aaron. I, he'd, he'd have a great soundtrack and 
<laughs> he makes a good point. I got it. I already got, I got it. Already got the studio right. He'd be awesome. He's got a studio and everything. It's really the studio is ready to go. Well, hey, we John, could make it. Yes. That may be a question for the law director to see what's permitted like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, law director. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, this was nothing new. It was discussed a few years ago, along with other ideas, but uh, we'll revisit those. Um, okay, so John, go to Kansas. You said yes, and uh, I'm going to say no because uh, I haven't read the whole thing, but uh, the motion is uh, approved. You have three of Anything else to discuss? If not, the meeting is adjourned.